All right, here we go. So I want to help you guys get set up with your um, Roland Alpha Juno 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 Touch OSC iPad layout created by Palatial Crest. So in order to get this awesome looking thing working with your awesome already Juno um, keyboard, you need to get a couple things set up on your screen first, which is what I have here for you. So first thing let's get set up right now is OSC or Touch OSC's editor. So you'll have the file. Now obviously you need to have Touch OSC already installed in your iPhone or iPad or iWhatever, but you need to have it installed. So open it up and it's going to open up the editor. Now once this editor opens up, you're going to have an option here to sync. You want to press that. So you've already seen this. It looks amazing. I know. Thank you. But you um, to show you how it works, first um, you want to add. So I actually, obviously, since you've seen it, I have it here. So I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to add a new layout. So I'm here adding. Nothing's happening. I don't have a host because I haven't clicked sync yet. So that's what I'm going to do now. Sync. And this wonderful window is going to come up. It says sync with this. And spinny wheel tells me that it's thinking and it's waiting and it's waiting <laughs> alright sometimes this is helpful too yep yeah, see I told you so there it is and it says downloading there and it's done so I'm gonna click on that good and it's set up so now I can stop syncing there's no need for that and I can close the editor because I've successfully transmitted, downloaded the file to my iPad from Touch OSC editor. So that's set. That's great. A couple things about setting up Touch OSC. So in this main section, connections, uh, I want to give you a lowdown on that. So there's a couple things you need to know. So click on the top part. And first, it should obviously be enabled. If it's not, that's a problem. You gotta fix that. So, the next thing, host. My host is set to my computer's host. If you don't believe me, I'll show you right here. Go over here where your Wi Fi or internet, whatever it is, should be Wi Fi because it's not gonna work on LAN. Go to open network preferences. When this opens up, it's gonna have airport is connected to blah 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 at the IP address blah 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 blah, which mine is 10 10 3 9. And down here I have the same number. That's a good thing. The second number, you want to have it set to 9,000. And the second, sorry, the third one is 9,001. So this number is a number that's going to be, I'm going to be showing you later in pure data. So don't worry so much about it now. Just make sure it's 9,000. Okay, good. Once that's set, go ahead and quit out of system preferences. Now you're ready to open up uh, Pure data, and that's a good thing. So, you do not want to open up this yet. Do not open this yet. You need to fix your settings first with pure data. So, pure data is opening up now. Here we go. So, one thing to mention this, this MR Peach thing, you might have an issue with that. If you do, it's a quick fix, and I'll just go through that. If you don't have an issue with that, just sit tight and don't be too annoying. So in preferences, here we go. In startup, you can easily add it. So you go down here, I have it added. I had to do it myself and it wasn't hard. I just clicked edit, wrote MR Peach, clicked OK, clicked OK, and that's all. Really easy. So that solves that problem. And then you just have to quit Pure Data Extended and reopen it. Go back into preferences, go to audio settings. Make sure that these two are unchecked. They don't need to be checked. You don't need anything from them. It's just going to take up your computer, uh, your memory, and stuff like that. Go again to preferences. In MIDI settings, this is where it gets important. Now, it doesn't have anything listed. That's a problem. <laughs> you can't have that. So, I have my MIDI right now co going into my Roland from my Firewire 410. So I have my MIDI cables way back in here. 
there they are beautiful babies so I got it going in so there's my red there going in out and you can see it says out and it should say out and back in here there it is going into in it needs to go into in it must go into in I can't see if that's right but I'm gonna guess that that's pretty up oh, there we go sorry there's a red cable it needs to go into in. It can't go out, out, in, in. It doesn't work that way. Okay? That means that my sound card is sending MIDI information from the sound card, from the computer, into the Juno. That's a good thing. You want that. That's a, yeah, one of those. So, whatever your device may be, it has to be the one that's sending MIDI information to your uh, Alpha Juno. So, once that's set, click apply, click OK. That's good. That's pretty much it. So now go ahead, open up your um, pure data patch, the Juno SC. Now, remember that number I told you, the 9000? There it is. So that's that same number that's right here on the outgoing port. There we go. Sorry for all the refocusing. So now, we're going to go back and touch OSC. And we have the layout there, the connection set. We're going to click this wonderful blue button that says done. That's a good button. So now we have this. So here is the test. What should happen is that whenever you move a dial on here, it should correspond to something happening in this uh, printout window right here. So it's showing that something is changing, which it is, and you can see it right there, and it's happening right now. It's amazing. So, yeah, if that's working, then that's a good thing. Now, there's one more thing. If you're not seeing an asterisk right here, this asterisk is very important. Before all this touch OSC business, when this was a real 1986 synthesizer, people had to use an alpha dial, an alpha dial, one, to control all the parameters that are inside this thing. Personally, I think it's unfair. They're trying to be really awesome and not make it so intimidating. Instead, they've just ruined it by doing an alpha dial. But fast forward, I can't count number of years. And now we're all set with this. And this is everything you need. This is everything that's inside of here. So this is the beautiful part. So I have values that are exchanging here. I have this wonderful asterisk right there. That's a good thing. Now, the next test, of course, is playing with it and making sure that sound comes out. So I've um, just done something to have a test just to open something up and I'm using Ableton Live. Of course you don't need to have live working you can actually just use a MIDI keyboard which I mean this is right here this is a MIDI keyboard um, but for the purposes of this I'm gonna use Ableton Live just because I love it can you blame me? So a couple things with working with live you need to make sure that your MIDI is all set up so go into your preferences uh, whoops. There we go. <laughs> so preferences, or you can just do command comma. It's going to pull up your, you want to go into your MIDI window. Now, I have my MIDI here for my Firewire going in and out. I need that. Okay. Once that's set, you can click out. So now you want to open up a MIDI, a MIDI track and you want to click your MIDI device that you will be controlling the Juno with. So I'm using my Firewire 410 to control my Juno. The track is active, and I've dropped in here an external instrument. So I just take that external instrument down, make sure the MIDI is going to my Firewire, and when I play on my keyboard, it's sending happy fun bounces. And I should be getting audio from the keyboard.
and I'm not getting out now. Okay, I'm gonna try it anyway. So, um, I recorded something that I like, and I think it's really awesome, so I'm just gonna play it anyway. So, here we go. Ah, there it is. So, you actually can't hear it, but you can see that something's happening right in here. So that's because I have the, the oscillators working for me right now, the, the frequencies. So here, I'll show you what, show you what you mean. Here we go. So here's your main volume right here. You have a couple of parameters that you can work with. You even have like your aftertouch. There it starts to get pretty loud. That's fun. So and a couple things I have with this sound that I like a lot, this bass sound. So it's just pretty basic, but I'm just going to play a little bit with it just to show you what it can do. That's the second time it's happened, and it's been happening a little bit, messing with this specific sound. It doesn't happen too much any other times, but if the sound starts to get, here I'll recreate it, there it is. It's caught on a note. So what I do to fix that is just press chord memory, and it resets it. I can just leave it like that. So I'm going to put on some chord I know. This is just one thing. I mean, there's tons and tons and tons of possibilities. And the best part is that you have everything that's inside of here on this pad, on this touch screen. So I hope you don't have any problems with it. I hope that you can really jam out and experiment and get some different sounds out of your Juno. And um, if you don't have one, you should definitely get one. I've also seen other layouts too for other synths. I can't recommend any sites that I've seen, but I know I've seen them around. It's just here say. I'm gonna I'm not lying. It, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. It's like one in the morning, so what a night. But I hope this gets you off to a good start. Um, if you have any questions, you can try to ask me. <laughs> you might get a response. Uh, I'm a big fan of noodling and figuring it out yourself. I've had a lot of help though uh, from um, an awesome guy named Glenn that I will also include on this link. So thank you Glenn for all your help getting me uh, set up with getting everything fixed. Uh, if it wasn't for you this couldn't be possible and um, yeah I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this and um, keep, uh, I don't know, keep tuned because I have more stuff coming. I actually have a couple more tutorials or suggestion videos on how to get other stuff working too. So, um, yeah, but for now, 